If you want to complete the No Man's Sky Omega Expedition in two hours or less, you're in the right place. This video will guide you step by step through the expedition, being incredibly resource efficient to save you time, as well as leave you with the most nanites, units and other helpful items to take back to your primary save at the end. Of course, this efficiency only really matters if you are playing the expedition through a primary save. We won't be requiring any starting items, so you can follow this guide whether it's a new save or existing. First things first, either start a new save using the expedition as a game mode, or log into an existing save, head to the anomaly, and start the expedition via the new terminal next to the nexus. After initialising, scan 6 flora around you, you likely won't even need to move to C6. Claim the rewards from Exobotany. Install the A-Class scanning module in your multi-tool, and while there, put your mining beam in a supercharged slot if one is available. Also put the life support in your exosuit. While you're at that, arrange the tech modules a bit, put your jetpack in the lower supercharged slot, the hazard protection in the other, and just have any of the corresponding life support, jetpack and hazard protection modules touching their respective main units. Now scan a minimum of 7 fauna, up to the full 12, but if you've got 8 or 9 you'll be in a good place. While looking for those fauna to scan, you're going to need to gather some resources. This is the stage we'll gather almost every resource we'll need for the whole expedition, but it won't take long. These are also minimums. Extra won't hurt anything, but won't really be needed. The carbon includes 80 to recharge your multi-tool. For the oxygen, you'll find enough the ship crash site, so no need to collect this while hunting for the rest. The cobalt will have to be gathered from a cave. Be sure to scan the rocks inside first, as the ones hanging from the roof give silver, which will be useful later. For the silica powder, simply switch to your terrain manipulator, set it to the largest, then bore a small hole in the ground. Change the terrain manipulator secondary setting to flatten, pointing at the bottom of the hole, click and hold, and just move the cursor around to take huge chunks of ground away, getting you this few hundred in a few seconds. These three buried cache or buried mineral formations will be visible via the scanner. I would suggest picking up other resources as you travel between these locations to dig them up. Once you have everything, head to your ship. Interact with the motor log recording device at the crash site and work through the dialogue. Now craft one metal plating, one dihydrogen jelly and a single quantity of ammunition. Build your portable refiner, fuel it with carbon and refine 80 carbon. Then 210 ferrite dust, refine 160 of that again into magnetized ferrite, and finally the cobalt you picked up. You only need 66 cobalt, but you won't need extra, so for space saving just turn all of it into ionized cobalt. Don't forget to pick up your refiner when done. Next, fix launch thrusters and pulse engine in your ship. Get in and take off, but don't leave the planet. We need a little more ferrite dust, so move the dust in your exosuit into your ship, that's if you have any left of course, then shoot the ground on dark patches of the surface with your ship, until you have 787 ferrite dust. The little rocks in these patches are numerous and not hefty to destroy. Doing it this way will speed up the collection versus using a multi-tool. Once you have your dust, head up into space. Locate the planet Nash, which is a sub-zero planet, so easy to spot as it's big and blue, and start pulsing toward it. While pulsing to Nash, keep an eye out for multiple asteroids flying past you. If you see a flash of many of them, pull out of pulse, as that is an asteroid field, and we need to destroy a bunch. Once you've spotted some, destroy 55 asteroids. There's no need to count, just destroy them until the Stardust milestone triggers. Check to ensure you have at least 75 silver, 200 or so tritium, and 33 gold. If you have the silver, you should easily have the rest. You may wish to open all gold nuggets and tritium clusters to save on inventory space. Then continue your pulsing to Nash. On arrival, land anywhere on the planet. Give it a second after exiting the ship and look for fauna. You'll need to scan 5 or less depending on how many you found on the starting planet. This planet has 5 and they aren't particularly shy, so scan any you see. Next, use your analysis visor to locate a salvageable scrap site, essentially the gold looking icon. On the way there, just keep an eye out for more fauna until the life in all its forms milestone triggers. Once at the salvageable scrap site, before doing anything, move your bolt caster into the supercharged slot. If of course there is one available. You'll only use your mining beam maybe once more later on and you're about to end some combat. Fully uncover the scrap and use your mining beam to remove the parts around the core. Then finally, the core. During the removal of the extra parts, you will be attacked by a corrupt sentinel or two. Just switch to your bolt caster and lay into them. With good aim, you can destroy them with two to three bursts each. 
Next, find a normal sentinel flying around and destroy it too. After it calls its friends, destroy those and you'll now have two stars. You won't need to go any higher than this. You need to destroy a total of 25 sentinels. The easiest and most lucrative way of doing this is to get to two stars so that the summoner sentinel will arrive. It's this pyramid looking dude here. Do not destroy it. Instead, solely focus on destroying the normal drone type that it summons and keep on top of it. If you aren't confident in your aim, you can destroy the healing bus too, but keeping those alive will ensure the summoner only summon drones. And as drones drop salvage glass, which can give technology modules where healing bus don't, you'll be a lot better off in nanites by sticking to the drones. The Sentinel Boundary Milestone will not trigger visibly if you're in combat, as with all milestones, so you'll need to keep an eye on the amount you've destroyed. If keeping the healers alive, once you hit 22 out of 25, you can quickly destroy the summoner to prevent further spawns, and then the bots before making your escape back to your ship. Once back at your ship, and the sentinels have lost sight of you, claim the milestones, escape velocity, and life in all its forms. Now, pop your refiner down again, and refine 412 carbon and 50 sodium. Now craft one carbon nanotube and four metal plating. Build your base computer and claim the area. In the expedition menu, focus the homecoming milestone and exit the menu. You'll need to give the game a few seconds to catch up. If it's taking a while, use the new objective cycling option until it shows a tip for homecoming. On PC, this is the H key. Now interact with the base computer and it will give you an option to get some blueprints. Click that. Now it's time to quickly build our mini base. Build the foundation, then a circular room on top of it. Add two straight corridors then another circular room, add a door to one of them, and then an access ramp to the door. Head inside and build a hazard wall module on the wall, as well as a health one. Now build two batteries, and then two solar panels. Build two storage containers, both the 0 and 1. You can build these anywhere, you won't actually need to use them. Then build a landing pad, and finally go to your base computer and rename the base whatever you want. Claim the reward from homecoming. Fix all four broken slots in your starship, then fix all but the slot requiring silver in your multi-tool. If you have 135 or more silver, you can fix the silver slot too. Claim the rewards from Scavenger. Now refine 632 ferrite dust, then refine 392 of the resulting pure ferrite. Next is 236 sodium, and finally 440 silicate powder. You won't need to take the refiner with you after this, so feel free to leave it built at your base. In your base, build three angled windows, then three glass roof corridors. Whack a biodome on the end of those, followed by three wall screens, an octa cabinet, a desk chair, a hexagonal table, and finally a teleporter. Now take a screenshot of whatever you like, provided you are on the planet Nash. I've heard that some console players can struggle with this objective. From how I understand it, there are two ways to take screenshots, and only one of them is counted for these objectives. So take a screenshot and double check it counted in the Milestone Grand Tour. If it did, just ensure you use that way of taking a screenshot in the future. Before we leave Nash, double check how many units you have. You are going to need around 500,000 units shortly. So if the treasure you got from the scrap site, as well as the units you have from scanning, doesn't equal half a million or more units, you'll need to make up the shortfall before leaving. Chances are, if you don't have enough, the scanning module didn't give you a fauna bonus, so scanning whatever it did give you will earn a few extra units. There are also the salvage glass from defeating the sentinels, opening those will provide you with numerous different things, many of which can be sold for some units. However, if you don't need it right now, leave them unopened until after expedition to save space. Another option is to dig up another scrap or two. You wouldn't need more than one or two more to make up the extra. When ready, head up into space and pulse toward the planet Hats. It's a low atmosphere planet. On arrival, you won't need to land. Just take a screenshot while you're in your ship, once you are within the atmosphere of the planet. Then pulse to Rarebrick Delta, the planet by the station. On arrival, do the same. Enter the atmosphere and take a screenshot, triggering Grand Tour. Now fly into the station. At the Galactic Trade Terminal, sell the Bromide Salt and Salvage Treasure. If you took up more treasures, sell them as well, as any extra Magno Gold or something you got, to make up the 500k, which at this point would be 580 or more. Now buy 50 ferret dust, 364 chromatic metal, 2 metal plating, 5 microprocessors and 6 wiring looms. You should have 100k or more left over. 
Also, if you're on Switch or just not seeing Chromatic Battle available, it would be worth checking the other trade terminal in the back on the other side or waiting for ships to fly in until one of them is selling Chromatic Metal. On the original side, talk to every NPC walking around and learn a word from each of them. Next, claim the rewards from both Stardust and Grand Tour. Then, head over to the other side of the station and approach the Starship Technology vendor. To him, sell basically every technology upgrade and prepackaged tech you have. You'll need the space as well as a bunch of the nanites. After the sales, purchase a C-Class Hyperdrive upgrade as well as a C-Class Positron upgrade. Install your Hyperdrive as well as both of the C-Class upgrades, then dismantle only the Positron upgrade. We want both the wiring loom and the cadmium from this. While in the ship inventory, if you have an available supercharged slot, I'd suggest putting the pulse engine on it. This will save time when pulsing about. Craft an antimatter, antimatter housing, and finally warp cell. Then charge your hyperdrive with it. It's time for our first warp, so exit the station and enter the galactic map. From the position you will be facing the system you are in, look just slightly to the left. There is a system 8 light years from you, called Bandab. Being so close, it's super easy to find. Warp there. On entry, fly right into the Atlas station. Inside, approach the Atlas terminal, but first take the two free warp cells. Then talk to the Atlas and exhaust the available dialogue. Exit the Atlas station and answer the anomaly's call. Head inside and go right for Nada to once again exhaust some dialogue. Claim the reward from Anomaly's heart and head further into the back. From the multi-tool specialist Iteration EOS, purchase the Advanced Mining Laser Blueprint. Then open the Synthesis Laboratory next to EOS and purchase the Acid, Lubricant, Unstable Gel and Liquid Explosive Plants. Finally, open the Construction Research Terminal on the opposite side and purchase the Ceiling Light Plan. You'll need to skip a fair few pages to find that one. Once done, exit the Anomaly and pulse to the Space Station. Inside, you just need one thing, 100k units or more of contraband. More will get you more units to take back to your existing save, so all good to spend what you got or buy whatever they got. Just make sure it's 100k units or more of the top three items in the vendor screen, like firstborn relics and such. Exit the station and warp to the Rendezvous 1 system. As you exit warp, don't dawdle and fly directly into the station to sell your contraband items. Be sure to sell all of the contraband you smuggled, they are clearly marked so it shouldn't be an issue. Then talk to all of the NPCs present until the Astrolinguistics milestone triggers. After it does, locate the Traveller NPC walking around and ask him about the blood. Then talk to him again and ask him where he came from. This will cost you 100 nanites but it's less messing than the other way. Now exit the station and head over to the grave marker the Traveller gave you. Interact with this grave and run its dialogue. Now head over to Rendezvous 1. If for any reason the marker isn't showing, just focus a milestone in the menu. This Rendezvous is an archive and very easy to spot on approach, so land directly at the archive, not the marker, and just walk into the archive until it triggers. Before you leave, scan three flora, fauna or minerals around to also complete the optional research. These optionals are worth a fair bit extra. You won't need to claim the rewards from any milestones I don't mention doing it on to complete the expedition. It's largely to save on inventory management and messing around, as this also saves you from having to use the inventory slots some milestones give you, as if you don't use them now, you can take them with you at the end back to your primary save. You'll also be happy to know that we are a fair bit past halfway. Even though we only just visited Rendezvous 1, we've set up the dominoes to just play through it. Getting back to it, warp to the Rendezvous 2 system. After exiting warp, summon and enter the anomaly. Go talk to Narda to complete the Atlas Rises milestone. This will transport you to a planet, which fortunately is the Rendezvous 2 planet. What luck! Focus a Rendezvous 2 milestone and head to the marker. This time it is a portal. Fortunately, all of these are quite close to the markers and easy to spot without landing. Before you leave, be sure to scan three things for the optional milestone. Next, we're off to the desolate planet in this system, Gartfall 10. Once at Gartfall 10, land by some Echino cactus and install the Hazmat gauntlets. Harvest 200 cactus flesh from the plants. Also, if you see a fauna or two about, give them a shoot, as you also need 24 Mordite. You can get this on the next planet, but as it's extreme sentinel, you may be interrupted. Once ready, head over to the corrosive planet at Pilseki Minor. Land by a patch of fungal clusters and harvest 200 Molt. If you didn't get enough Mordite from the previous planet, shoot up some fauna to get it now. Take off from the planet for safety and head into space, summon the anomaly and enter. 
In your ship, craft an acid, then an unstable gel, and then a liquid explosive. Also craft one antimatter and two hermetic seals. Claim the reward from both Atlas Rises and the Fallen. Install the Indium Drive in your ship and also the S-Class Hive Drive module you just got. From the anomaly, teleport back to your base. At your base, build a nutrient processor, a ceiling light, and a wonder projector. Interact with the nutrient processor and cook a heptaloid wheat, then a sweet root, being sure to leave at least one root. Cook the refined flour and processed sugar together, and then combine that with the sweet root. If you biffed it and no longer have a sweet root, you'll likely have a cactus flesh left over that can be used in place of the sweet root. Move the biscuit as well as the extra wheat, sweet root, cactus flesh and mold into the processor's ingredient storage. Just so it's out of the way, you could also destroy it if you wanted. Head up into space and warp to Rendezvous 3 system. Focus the milestone and head straight for the rendezvous. This time it's a crash freighter, super easy to spot and right by the marker. Once the milestone triggers, take off and fly in a westerly direction. We are going to the coordinates minus 31.76 by minus 89.79. When heading to coordinates, it is much easier to do the second coordinate first, as when changing the first, we can utilize north and south markers, and so change the first coordinates without further altering the second, but not the other way around. You will also find it far quicker to fly via coordinates very high up. If you fly just above the cloud level on this planet, you will be close to the atmosphere line. Close but not over will allow you to still see coordinates on your ship's hood, but travel far faster. So fly west, roughly, leaning more towards south than anything, until the second coordinate hits minus 89.79. Then switch to perfectly south, until you hit minus 31 or so, and make your descent moving forward until the sunken freighter pops into view. When it does, land on the ring poking out of the water. Jump into the water toward the red lit black box of the freighter and interact with it to work through the dialogue. On the way back to your ship, shoot one of these glowing minerals to get 33 or more salt and then scan three things for the optional milestone. Take off and head into space. We're now going to run through the memory milestones in one big lot. First, craft the Nile Devotions, then exit your inventory. Go back into inventory and it should be flashing. For some reason, you have to exit and re-enter for each of these. Interact with the item, then start pulsing. Once the alert for rare space anomaly pops up, exit pulse and answer communication. Work through the dialogue, then claim the reward from Reality Grains. We need to do this three more times. So build the Knowledge of Conquest, exit and enter inventory, use the item, pulse, do the dialogue, then claim the reward from Unbounded. Craft the Knowledge of Bones, exit and enter, use, pulse, dialogue, and then claim the rewards from Deep Glass. Craft the Knowledge of Void, exit, enter, pulse, dialogue, and you're good for the memories. No need to claim the last one. Instead, enter Galactic Map and find Bandab again. It's super close to the starting system and will now have a white ring around it. If you can't find it for any reason, you can use the anomaly to teleport there. But if you can, warp. Enter the Atlas station once more and talk to the Atlas. This should complete Eclipse. It's time to warp again, but this time we need another unmarked system, but it's super easy to find. On entering the galactic map from Bandab, position the camera so that Doriguk 7, the starting system, is a little left of center, and the first rendezvous, Tayabi 9, is at the bottom near the right. To the right of Doriguk 7, there is a system 50 light years from Bandab called Esakun. This is a dissonant system and will say as such in the subtitle, Warp There. Though note that you don't need this specific dissonant system, any will do. On entry, if there's a space battle, just fly to the hangar of the lead vessel to make the battle disappear, fly into the station, or defeat the pirates. After everything has calmed down, use the carrier air fragment in your inventory and pulse the dissonant spike it produces. Land near the interceptor and install the advanced mining laser. Interact with the ship and take the three items from it. Use your analysis visor if they aren't obvious to locate three radiant shards and mine them. Use the visor once more to locate the dissonant resonator to get an inverted mirror. Once located, destroy it and then run away from the sentinels until they stop chasing you. This can be a pain as sometimes they will drop echo locators and RNG can make that happen a bunch of times in a row. Just keep going to them and destroying them until you get a mirror. Once free and clear, call your ship to you. Get in and use the Hylian brain. Fly to the monolith it marks and interact with the central altar. Work through the dialogue to get your harmonic brain. Then head back to the interceptor. Interact with the interceptor, fix it, and then claim the ship. 
Now get back in your old ship, head to space and warp to Rendezvous 4. Almost there folks. Pulse the Rendezvous, you'll need to focus the milestone again for it to show. Land at the portal to trigger the milestone and scan three things. Back into space, warp to Rendezvous 5. Focus the milestone after blue expanse triggers and pulse to the Rendezvous. This one is also a portal so land at it, trigger the milestone and then scan three things. Head up into space, open the galactic map and warp to the closest blue system. It should be to the left and called Hero2U. It may take a second for that name to show up. Once there, fly to the plated planet. It's also dissonant. Land and find a fauna to scan. Head back into space, open the galactic map and find the closest black hole system, noted by the purple swirl icon. Warp there. On entry, fly directly into the black hole and blammo. Expedition complete. Now you've completed the expedition, there are a few things to do for you officially end it at the terminal in the anomaly. That is, if you did this on an existing save. Firstly, head to a station. It's a good idea to be in one when accepting the other unclaimed milestones, as you'll get a lot of technology upgrades, many you probably won't care about, taking back your main save anyway. At which point, you should sell them to a tech vendor for nanites to bring back. There are also a few treasures to sell for units. I would absolutely suggest keeping the exosuit, ship and multi-tool slot augments to take back to the primary safe, unless of course you don't need them, in which case you could have used them for this, or just sell them for more units. Don't forget to also pop to Ares on the anomaly to get your milestone related nanites. It'll be a good 1000 extra or so. You may also wish to get multiple of your photonics cores from the starboard runner ship. A few of these tips and more can be found on this video from last week. Check it out to maximize your gains. Once you've prepared and are ready to finish the expedition, subsave for good, go to the anomaly, having everything you want to take back in your active exosuit or ship inventory. Make sure the ship you have active and multi-tool you have active are the ones you may want to make a copy of. You'll be given a chance to populate the cache with items to take back. Units, nanites and quicksilver will automatically be transferred, as well as more units and nanites for various things you did during. And swish, all done. I hope you found this helpful. Have an amazing day.